Hey, what's up? I'm Theo. Um, I am a filmmaker by day and kind of a fitness enthusiast. Um, and today I wanted to tell the story about how I lost 30 pounds for my wedding. Okay, so for backstory, um, I've always had some kind of overweight issues or I've always had some type of weight issues ever since like it was a kid. Uh, would always do a lot of like diets um, for a little bit um, and would get into exercising sometimes, but then ultimately would, would quit on it. And so when I was 30, I proposed to my now wife, Andrea, and um, you know, I looked at the scale and I realized I was at the like heaviest I've ever been in my life. I was 190 pounds um, and my wedding was coming up and I wanted to make sure that I looked right for my photos. That was really my why is like, I wanted to make sure that I could have wedding photos um, that I could always look back at and be proud on it, proud of. And, and for me, like always looking back at photos of me being, being heavier than I really wanted to be, uh, just just always sucked. And, and that was something I knew I wanted to try to like get through. Um, so it was uh, September um, 3rd was our wedding date. And so um, I think it was like around March of that same year. Um, this was this is 2017. Um, you know, I made a commitment that I was like gonna be really serious. Um, you know, I, I looked at my body mass index or what it should be for like my height and it was like 160 pounds. So at 190 pounds, I was 30 pounds overweight. So um, yeah, I, I was really focused, set out on a mission to, to, to shed those extra 30 pounds. So the biggest thing for me that helped me to uh, lose the 30 pounds was it was the first time that I was ever able to consistently go to the gym. And I def definitely think that that's like a, a major tip is like you have to figure out how to consistently go to the gym. Like there's just no way around it. You have to work out. Um, if you're, you know, trying to lose a sizable amount of weight, um, it's gonna be really hard if you're relying on diet alone. Um, and so I've always had bouts of going to the gym, but I just never was really able to like kind of keep it up long term and sustainable. Um, and so for me, what was like really um, game changer was like my job actually was right across the street from uh, a gym. Um, and so that's one of the biggest impediments to me being able to ever consistently work out was like, you know, like location, like having to like you know, drive super far or take buses and trains to get everywhere, but I could literally just walk right across the street. Um, so that made it easy for me to, um, you know, have to have it at top of mind because I'd be walking by that every day on my way to work. Um, and it was just easy for me to just get there, get back and, and be on with my day. So um, yeah, that, that definitely helped out uh, with the consistency. Another thing that really helped out with the consistency, I think was, um, just me figuring out how it worked best for my schedule. Um, you know, I've always aspired to want to be a morning workout person, but that shit just never really works out. Um, you know, I'll try it, I'll do it for a couple of days, but it was just so, it's just so hard for me. I'm just not a morning person. Like I like to move slow in the morning. And if I want to make it to work on time um, and I'm moving slow in the morning, that means I have to get up like at like five o'clock to be able to get to the gym, work out, shower, get home, eat a little quick breakfast, change, and then do my commute. Um, so it, was, it proved to be really hard. So obviously the only other option for most folks is to work out in the evening. Um, and for me, I, I could do that, but at a certain point that also just like really eats into like your evening time, right? Cause uh, I, you know, at the time I was like commuting on the train. So it'd be an hour on the train, then I'd want to work out, then I'd have to take a shower, then I'd want to eat. Then it's like, I wanna do other things with my like with my free time after work. And it's just so hard to be able to do that. And and plus I'm tired a lot of times. And if I work out, then I do all those other things. It's nine o'clock, it's like literally, I just don't like to be confined to like, all right, I can't do, if I wanna work out, I can't do anything with the remainder of my evenings. Um, so ultimately what really helped me out with my consistency and working out was being able to um, go during lunch at work, right? Um, I'd have an hour lunch break. So I'd head over to the gym five minutes earlier than that lunch if, if possible, change, get it in in about 30 minutes, shower, come back. Um, you know, so I was in, ended up eating later lunches. 
Um, most of the time I would just kind of eat while I'm working or whatever, which is maybe not the best thing, but um, it allowed me a time where I actually like felt like I had enough time. I was only going across the street to the gym. Um, and so those two things, having a location um, that's nearby, easily accessible, and be just ultimately finding out that when it worked best for my schedule really allowed me to go for months and months and months on end longer than I've ever gone before consistently at the gym. Um, so yeah, convenience of uh, getting to the gym, getting to wherever your workout is, is, is crucial. And that's, that's what I found was most crucial for me. So another huge game changer for me um, in, in getting the 30 pounds down was tracking. Uh, I, I got really into tracking like everything I did and I, and I found that it just like really uh, gave me the ability to be like satisfied after like a week of doing work to be able to see all of the things that I had accomplished with my time. Um, so one thing that helped me in going to the gym and getting back into like weight training was I got um, uh, a fitness app. Uh, I think it's called My Fitness Buddy. Um, and essentially it has a bunch of like different workouts in it. Um, but even if you want to do your own workout, you can just create your own custom workout within the app. And then um, it would allow you to track like not only like how many sets that you did um, and how many times you did them, but what the weight you were doing it at is so that like the next week when you're doing that same workout, you could be like, OK, I did 130 pounds on this uh, three sets, why don't I try to push myself a little bit more and do like 135 three times or 140. And so over time I could kind of gradually, because I had a reference as to what I did last time, gradually kind of increase my way up. So another thing that really helped in tracking is just tracking your weight, right? So I finally got myself a scale. I would went like years, just not really knowing my weight, just kind of assuming what it was. So every time I went on a scale, I was like, you know, uh, very disappointed with how off I was on that. Um, so I knew that if I wanted to try to hit like a goal, um, I was gonna have to be able to consistently track it. So I got a decent like little $20 scale at Marshall's and um, yeah, that's all I really needed. And I, I would really do it pretty consistently, like every day almost just to kind of see like the, um, you know, like what small tweaks inside of my diet or my workout were actually being affected. Um, yeah, so definitely get yourself like some type of app for tracking for exercise. Um, get maybe something to track your weight. Um, there's big, more like souped up scales out there that can do things like track your BMI um, or your, uh, your fat percentage. I now have like a scale that does that, which is even cool. Um, and it comes with its own connected app. Uh, it's called like a, a the Nokia, it's like a Nokia model. I thought that they just made phones, but apparently they make skills too. Um, and then the other thing that I did that I really appreciated was I had a, a, my own behavior tracking board, right? Um, and that was something that was like less tech, right? I literally just got like a graph, like a um, those little square chart graphs or whatever. On the x-axis, I had every day of the month. And then on the y-axis, I had just different things that I was tracking. So I'd be like, okay, walk 10,000 miles or 10,000 steps that day. Or, <laughs> or um, you know, didn't eat after 7 p.m. Or worked out, uh, lifted weights, ran. You know, um, just uh, you know, cooked or ate greens, whatever it was, and I would check off everything that I did day by day, and it was just super gratifying to just see, like, at the end of the month, all of the checks that came in, and then whatever, like, I had dips or whatever, it sucked, but I'd be able to look up at that graph visually, and um, you know, just be able to like kind of see, like, yo, you're slipping, but look how much progress you made this month. It would be such a shame if you were to just waste the rest of the month and not check this off because you know you messed up one day. So having a behavior tracking system, something physical like that uh, was super helpful. Um, I've seen like ads, Instagram ads now for like little journals. Some people don't wanna like post shit on their wall or whatever, but like having a little journal, something to track your behaviors, um, really just kind of like helps you to stay accountable to yourself. So track things. The other big component of all this is obviously diet. 
Um, and I will admit that I am by no means any type of like dietitian. Like um, I'm super novice. I, I'm like just now starting to really get consistently into cooking and things like that. So you can imagine a few years ago, whenever I was going into this, I was I was I felt like I was going like really blind. Um, but you know, um, I did have a couple of tenets that I that I tried to stick by pretty consistently. Um, that I would you know definitely recommend, um, and that helped me out. So um, you know the first biggest one for me is like I think uh, prior to this I was probably drinking more um, than I should have probably a few night um, um, at least probably at least five, four or five times a week I was drinking like two or more drinks a night lots of beer um, you know and, and liquor and, and other things like that so um, it was hard to just be like okay I'm gonna go cold turkey I'm not drinking anymore um, but what I did decide to do is just like essentially like, all right, Monday through Friday, like just no drinking, you know, like most of the time I was drinking, I was drinking um, in the evening. And I also had as like another um, like kind of diet restriction was just like, um, just don't eat after like seven o'clock. So if I'm not eating after seven o'clock and I don't really have a drink until after seven o'clock, that just kind of cut out a lot of the alcohol. And I, and I would say pretty quickly, I was able to drop a lot of pounds just from reducing the amount of alcohol that I was uh, taking in. Um, another thing that I did early on that really helped, especially when I was like not really good about, about cooking, not really great at like understanding like nutrients or like any of that stuff was like, I just started uh, ordering uh, meal preps or like not even meal preps. It was like wholly made meals. I started using Freshly. Freshly is this like, basically order online, like pre prep prep meals for the week um, and they'll send them to you. And I did that probably for a couple, like probably about a month, month and a half, just to get me in the habit of like eating regular portion sizes of healthy options, right? So Freshly was like, they were somebody like, you don't even gotta cook our meals, right? So it's like, it was different from a TV dinner cause it was just like fresh ingredients and like chefs that actually put thoughts into the meals. Um, but it was still, you know, and they were healthy. So that just kind of got me in the habit of like, even if I'm not cooking, I have good portions and I'm eating at consistent times regularly. So Freshly kind of kickstarted me on getting into eating regularly. And then after that, or over time, I was like, you know what? I can do more of this. I can get into the kitchen. Um, so that kind of like ushered me into finally being able to get into the kitchen. Between not drinking and having freshly meals and just kind of getting consistently on an eating pattern with healthy, healthy meals and portions. Um, those really helped out. And then I started to, um, you know, just dive into YouTube and learn more about other people's like um, styles of eating and get into, I, I started getting into mealing, meal prep, prepping over time, things like that. Um, so, you know, I didn't go cr too crazy with the diet. I wasn't super restrictive. I just ultimately, you know, kept it simple, tried to reduce the amount I was eating, stop eating after 7 p.m., stop drinking during the week, and get on like a consistent pattern of just eating whole meals, snacking le less, and eating appropriate portions. So Freshly helped me to do that. And then after I got used to, after a month of just eating appropriate portions, I started to indulge in actually cooking those appropriate portions for myself so that I didn't get taxed so much ordering pre-prepared meals for myself. Um, so yeah, that was it. So something um, maybe not so obvious that I think kind of helped me to um, achieve this this weight loss goal I had was uh, really just like mental health. So at the time, my wife, uh, you know, she's she's Buddhist and she was chanting a lot. Um, and I, I saw chanting to be kind of like a form of meditation. And it was something she was doing like every morning pretty consistently. Um, and so whenever I was like really like feeling myself and getting consistent and like ha loving all these routines that I was doing. I was like, well, maybe it's good for me to have like a routine like this, something like kind of meditative that I could do. So I started like chanting pretty regularly during that time with her. Um, I got to a point where I was chanting probably for about 15, 20 minutes every morning. Then I'd have my green smoothie. Then I was out the way to work. So um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's something simple. It doesn't have to be chanting. Um, you know, it can be meditation. 
Uh, maybe it's just walking around the park every morning or whatever you do. Just, just basically baking in consistency and discipline and routine in other assets of your life allowed, it allowed for me to be able to like normalize some of the, of the diet and the weight loss consistency and routine that I have because I was practicing that muscle in other ways too. So it definitely was not easy to lose 30 pounds and I did struggle a lot. Um, so one area that I struggled a lot in is I tried a lot of different diets, right? So I ended up, um, I remember it was like right when that movie What the Health came out and me and Andrea watched it and uh, we were like, yo, we're going vegan from here on out. And I was like already kind of like on the health mode and like switching up my diet a lot. So I was like, cool, I'm gonna go vegan too. So I ended up going vegan like the year that I'm planning for this wedding, the year of my bachelor party. I remember going on like my bachelor party trip and not really being able to like go all out like I wanted because I had like these vegan restrictions that I put on myself. I, I feel like I dived into being a vegan a little too quickly. Like I was doing a lot of like anything that I could to avoid eating non-meat and dairy, but it was at the expense of like, oh, I don't really know what to eat. So I would just have like meals that weren't really enjoyable to me because I didn't know how to order at a restaurant for se, uh, per se, like uh, vegan and make sure that it was enjoyable. I didn't really, really know how to cook vegan, make sure that it was still healthy and that it was like going to be something that I enjoyed. So I dived in pretty quickly there and I, and I, I burned out relatively quickly on, the, on going 100% vegan. Uh, another thing that I, I remember doing, like Anj and I were like, hey, maybe it'd be good for us to do some type of liquid cleanse. So I remember doing a liquid cleanse and then like the week after just like gorging on food and going really hard at that. So those are areas I struggled in. Also at work, like I, I, work at, for, I worked for a tech company at the time and every Friday they would have like these bomb ass free meals. And I would, I mean, I would go all hard all week doing great, bringing my lunch, but they'd be like, oh, I need to bring my lunch in on Friday. And then like, there would just be this free platter. And I remember going hard on that. So I would get, I would definitely be like down like three or four or five pounds over the course of a week or two. And then I would have one of those kind of bingey kind of sessions and pick up a lot of weight. So that, uh, that slowed me down. Also, another area that like I struggled in was just understanding what to eat. I knew that I had to eat less, but I didn't understand like what it was. So I was just eating like salads all day or just smoothies, uh, but not really like eating any type of like high protein things. Um, I wish that I had better understanding of not only like like how to reduce the amount of food you're eating, but how to make sure that the food that you're eating is like good for you and not just like kind of and not promoting like muscle growth and things like that that you also also need. Um, and then lastly, um, I remember at the time I was really focused on just weight, fat loss, fat loss, fat loss. So all I was doing was like running for hours or, um, you know, walking on the treadmill, like just any and everything that I could do cardio wise. And that de definitely cardio is a way to like reduce, you know, fat, but it's not necessarily like the best way. I, I would have probably wanted to emphasize like lifting weights more like early on. Um, Cause like now I know that like you can lose a lot of weight actually by lifting weights. Cause you're sweating obviously while you're lifting weights, but then your muscles are restoring as you're sleeping from lifting weights. So you're burning even more calories that way. Um, Cause I, I think while I enjoyed the weight that I lost, I felt like I was still pretty chubby, even though I was thinner. Um, and uh, yeah, just kind of like didn't have a lot of muscle, muscle definition, which is now something that I'm more focused on, on developing. Okay, so the results. It took me from March of 2017 to basically right before I left for the wedding, uh, but I got there. I was down from 190 to 160 pounds. Um, it felt great. I think the most exciting part was realizing that um, I actually am a small, like I was just used to buying like larges so that I could, you know, like fit out this way, but they were always super long on me. I'm a shorter dude. And I was like, I could, I mean, at first I was like, mediums are cool. But then after a while I was like, oh, like I, I'm actually, I'm actually small. Um, it, you know, so it meant not only did I get to, to lose weight 
Um, but I got to kind of get a new wardrobe because everything that I had, I was just like swimming in. Um, so that was exciting. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, fortunately, I, I feel blessed. Sometimes it's nice to be able to, to pick up some weight, but I would say easily within the three weeks after I lost that weight, I picked up 10 pounds because I meant, went immediately to my wedding in the South. So you know we were eating good in the South. And then we flew to South Africa and stayed in an awesome ass hotel and had an amazing honeymoon. Uh, and I was eating good there too. So right when I got back and I got back on the scale, I was like, oh boy, I'm back up to the 170 now. But it was all good. Um, I ended up uh, being able to lose that 10 pounds, shed that relatively quickly because I had already like built a foundation for how to lose weight. I still could consistently go to the gym. Um, you know, I still found out the time of the day that worked best. I had still been implementing and learned a lot about like my dietary habits and nutrition. I was still able to implement like doing consistently tracking different things and all the apps and, and stuff I'd used along the way. Um, so um, ultimately um, it didn't really uh, hurt that I picked up that weight. Um, and I've been able to keep off that or be around the 160 mark uh, for the past three years. Um, that was until Corona and quarantine hit, um, but we'll save that video for another day. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I, I would say, honestly, if I could do it with my wild ass eating habits, um, then, you know, it's definitely achievable by anybody, but you, you it's, it's worth having a plan and, and doing your research. Um, and if I could just say, one thing, uh, my mantra um, that like kind of pushed me through this is honestly consistency over quality, at least to start. Like just get in the habit of doing it. Even if it's half-ass push-ups, just do those half-ass push-ups every day until you can do a good-ass push-up. Then that's your new normal. But just go and getting in the habit of going and you know, doing it consistently. Don't worry about if it's perfect. It'll get perfect over time but it can only get perfect over time if you keep going. So that's it. That's my story of losing 30 pounds for my wedding. Um, I got some awesome wedding photos out of it. Uh, <laughs> I know my family was really impressed to see me, um, you know, and, and yeah, I just felt like super joyful and proud um, of um, being able to, to shed all this weight. Um, I would love to hear, um, you know, some tactics that maybe you guys tried on your weight loss journeys. Um, I'd love to hear any thoughts about things that I, I said here today that maybe are helpful to you as you try your new weight loss journey. Um, yeah, if you want to hear more about anything that I've talked about, leave a comment um, below. And please, um, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe. All right, juices, drink water. <laughs> what time?